Hi there. You're tuning in with Lorraine Chai, the author of Music Strings Tastic Theory Books for Violin, Viola and Cello. Now, today we will be looking at note reading for string instruments, so the violin, viola and cello, and how we can help our students learn to read music in a, a different or a less traditional method. As a multi-instrumentalist, I have had the pleasure of teaching in multiple, multiple methods in regards to note reading for piano, for strings, for woodwind and any different instruments itself. However, the, I find that teaching note reading for strings has been the most fun is because as string players, we've got four notes to refer to. And the four notes that I'm talking about are the open strings of the instrument. So depending on which instrument your student plays or which instrument you play, we the reference of note reading should all be evolved around the open strings itself. So for violin it would be G, D, A, E, for viola and cello would be C, G, D, and A. So now I'm gonna take examples from my books. And um, if you have got my copies of my books, that may be helpful. Otherwise, you know, if you've got your own method of teaching, that's fine as well. So what we'll do is I am just gonna reference from my books, but from the strings itself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sharing the sample pages from my books. So first of all, as I mentioned before, the reference should always be around the open strings. So let's look into um, this. So let's look at this. So this is from my viola books. Again, I am going to reference on um, my books itself. So the viola books, we are looking at viola. So viola, I like to use um, acronyms, acronyms to help students remember. So acronyms for viola and cello will be cute girl dances around. You can create your own acronym or sometimes I give the opportunity of students to create their own acronym. With them creating their own acronym helps them remember the names of the strings. It doesn't need to be grammatically correct as long as it makes sense to the child, I think that is most helpful per se. So this is on the violin, the viola strings. It will be the same for the violin strings itself. Now, if we look at, if we look at, let's say this one here. So we're looking at the violin books. Now the violin books here on the same page, Let's take a look. Same page on the open strings would be greedy dinosaurs it always eats. Greedy dinosaurs ate everything. Sometimes ate and eat students get confused. So try and find words that would help. Again, the same thing, get the students to create their own acronyms. Greedy daddy always eats. Um, or greedy Donny, greedy Don giant dinosaur, you know, they create their own words. And with that, because they're using their imagination and because they feel, they feel really excited of having the abilities to create, it helps them memorize that. So with that, it's in reference to um, where the strings are. G is low, D is a little bit higher, A and E is on the top. So have them always refer to the open strings. Start by giving them pieces of open strings. I know certain methods are different, but I, I find that it, the more you give them materials and open strings, the more that they can understand, hang on, E is high, G is the very low and heavy one, or depending on what instrument you're doing, and A and D is the one that you they usually get mixed up, but that's fine. Like, you have to explain to students that it's fine if they get mixed up between the two because they look quite similar. E is on the very top and the G is on the bottom. What I like to say is the G is on the basement, so he's hiding at the bottom, and then the E is on the top space. He's not on the roof, he's on the top space, the top level. So that's explaining the open strings itself. However, before getting into that, if you're familiar with my books, I like to share in regards of students understanding where notes should sit. So this is coming from my mini books, so all my sticker books. Now with this, it's more of students understanding the stave 
and where does notes sit, whether it's through the line or in the space. They have to be able to identify the difference between space and lines before they get into note readings itself. So before they get into this, they need to understand where notes should sit through the line or in the space, which I find would be really helpful before introducing the open strings. For many of you that know how my books are or know me, I like to introduce theory from the very, very beginning of a lesson because theory should not only be taught after months and months of playing, it should be taught in the beginning so that the kids understand the kind of language that you'll be using. I like to encourage kids to think and use the knowledge that they know of theory into their playing. And with that, it helps students in regards to improvisation. It helps students in regards to sight reading. And with that, you don't have to worry about the sight reading component of the exams if you have your kids sitting from using exams. So after we've taught students how to read or to memorize how the open strings look like, the next thing we're going to do is reference. So reference meaning they need to be able to know the notes in between the space and lines. And with that, the next thing that I would do is this. So what I would introduce is this. Okay, so after they learn the open strings, the next what they're going to do is this. I know a lot of teachers tend to not want to use this, but I'll explain why. So I introduced this. They have to know the notes through the lines and in the space. So every good boy deserves fruit, or I change it. Every good boy draws fruit. Um, every good boy deserves Ferrari. Every every good boy, you know, I don't know, dances funnily. I don't know. Make, make it up if you want to. Change it if you want to, but that doesn't matter. Now, they need to be able to identify the notes, not only in the open strings, but this. And after that, you need to explain about the notes in between. The E after E, they have to explain to them in regards to, to the alphabet. What comes after E? F. So think, explain it. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. You know, it, it can be a long process in regards to explaining um, the letters after the every or after the good or after the B. If they are not able to do that, get them to see see this. So what is between every and good? What is between E and G? And then they, they try and calculate. But sometimes they get the answers incorrect, correct? Sometimes they get the answers incorrectly, isn't that right? What I would do is I would get them to say the alphabets out loud because sometimes kids won't be able to hear what they, think in their head and it's good when they hear it out loud so get them to say the alphabets a b c d e f g a b and get them to say it slowly if they are still not able to do this i would recommend writing it down so that they can visually see it and if you have a problem with that you can download this free resource from my website over here, it says note reading chart. Now the note reading chart that I have is more of a guideline that you can use or not use. And it, it goes like this. Every good boy deserves fruit. Ask them the question, what is between E and G? E and G, oh, it's F. So if kids are not able to visualize it in their minds, they have to be able to visualize, they have to be able to see it in front of them, which helps you explain. And then you can ask, oh, okay, what comes after G? It goes back to A. Sometimes ki kids are not able to figure out what is what, what letter comes before a certain letter. So this method also helps in regards to they can see it visually. That is just for the violin itself. The download that I have available on my website comes with a viola as well, garbage. Oh, Fat Alley Cat Eats Garbage. You can create your own. Gummy bear dance funny always. This is created by my students, student, and I tend to keep that instead of a good boy does fine always because that tends to be a bit of a mix up between the boy here and the boy in the shovel clap. So that is for a resource on my website itself. 
in regards to the notes between the lines and in the space. So through the lines and in the space. I like to use the word through. So if we go back to my book, after they're able to do this, then you have to distinguish, oh, hang on, this is an A. Isn't that an A string? Huh, there you go. You're making the connection. What is before an E? D. Hang on a second. That's a D string. What's after a D or between D and E? D and F. Ooh, that's an E string. So they make the connections between reading the notes through the line in the space and the open strings. Test them out if you need to. And with that, again, there is another resource on my website. Let's see if I can bring that up. Okay, so another resource on my free downloadable website is this. You've got note reading exercises which you can download. Whoop to do free, free resources, autoclave and base clef. But what I love about this is I like to help teachers and students. So I love to help students make the connections between that. So with that, there is this note namings for violin. Okay, and I'll get to that later. What happens is students are able to name the notes. Maybe not this yet, right? Okay, so they're able to name the notes, which is brilliant. So let's go back to the next step. The next step of naming the notes, first, open strings, in reference to open strings. Next, the notes through the line in the space. After that is identifying the notes through on each string. So identifying and recognizing the notes on each string. So if you follow through my books, we start on the D string, D, D, E, F sharp, G, and they're able to recognize, ooh, it's closer to the D string, which is where it is. And then the A string, and then the G string, and the E string. So these are all the ensemble materials. It's on my ensemble series. This is on the violin book of my string statistic series. And the mini series also has this kind of similar process. On my graded book, this is what I'm referring to in regards to visualizing the students visualizing it. So after they learn this, that every good boy de deserves fruit or draws fruit, they need to be able to recognize this. So with that, introduce more pieces on certain strings. Like the Suzuki method, I tend to use the fingering and I tend to introduce the D0, D1, D2, D3 method. And with this, I allow the students to be able to make the decision themselves whether or not they read the letters or the numbers. Because when they look at this, they, they go, oh, it's G string first finger instead of the letters. Or they look at this, they go, oh, it's a G. Okay, that finger and a G. So with this method or multiple methods on teaching note reading, then you can go back to this. So let's see if I can find it, um, this, okay. So remember, by then they understand the open strings. They know how to read the notes between uh, through the line and in the spaces, and they know the notes of each string. Then you can get them to work on this worksheet in regards to name the notes first. Okay, great, now that you name the note, tell me which string it's from. Okay, they tell that they mention which string it's from. And then I want you to tell them, I want you to name or tell me which finger you're going to use. So they tell you, oh, finger three or finger zero, finger one, finger two. So this is kind of like a Suzuki method on top of it. And then on top of the Suzuki method, you've got kind of the traditional way in terms of naming it, but in a different way. And they have to recognize which string it's from. And that is the way that I would teach note reading for students. On top of all that note reading with the letters and the fingering, you can teach students how to recognize patterns, but that's a whole nother, nother topic. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you do have any other ways that you teach your students or any different method that you use to teach your students. Other than that, until next time.
so yeah if you do like this video please like subscribe and share my video until next time see ya